Advent of Code is an annual event where we get a new coding challenge each day. It's a great way to get practice in a programming language or a style of programming, and we're going to use it as an opportunity to practice functional programming in JavaScript, which is basically a modern way of writing JS where everything is a constant and all our functions are self-contained. So instead of using stuff like loops or if statements, we're going to do everything with functions. So this might seem awkward or frustrating, but trust me, writing functional JS can be a lot of fun and it's a good style to get used to if you plan on working with React. Now this is technically a competition of who can solve these problems the fastest, but we're going to take our time and try to learn as much as we can from each problem. These challenges get progressively more difficult each day, so for the first day this should be the simplest one. So we've got this story about elves carrying food, but really what the problem boils down to is that we have a list of numbers that are divided into groups, and what we want to do is basically find which of these groups would have the largest sum if we were to add up all the numbers in the group. And then we'll return that sum. So the overall game plan will be to divide the list into groups, find the sum of each group, and then find the largest one of those sums. For these advent of code problems, the input is always given as a string, usually a really long string. So we'll need to start by parsing that out. In this case, each group is separated by a double line break, and then the numbers in the groups are separated by single line breaks. So we're gonna start by doing a dot split on the double line break. So let's just take a look at what that gives us. Great, so now we have an array of all the groups, but they still look a little weird. They're basically just strings of numbers separated by line breaks. So what we really want to do is break these up, get the actual numbers and add them up. So I'm just going to grab this first one as a sample group and then we're going to write a function to find the sum just from that group. So I'm going to use an arrow function which is pretty common in functional programming and it's going to take an input that is expected to be a string like this separated by line breaks. And the first thing is that we want to break this up so we're going to use dot split again but this time it's going to be on the single line break character and we should expect that this basically just gives us an array of numbers. So now we're just going to test this out just using this sample group. We're not going to do the whole thing yet and there we go. We have an array of the numbers we're looking for but you're probably noticing they're actually technically still strings. So we want to convert this whole array from an array of strings to an array of numbers. So I'll just rename this string number list and we're going to get our actual number list by using dot map. So dot map is an array built in that's going to modify each element of the array in the same way and then give us a new array of all the modified elements. So we give it a callback function that basically describes how we want to modify each element. And in this case, we basically just want to take each of these strings and convert it to a number. So in the past, we could have used something like parse int and that'll work. But these days, it's a little more common to use just the number function. Great, so now we have an array of numbers, but let's just take a look at this callback function because basically it's saying take the input and then the output should be whatever the number function outputs for that same input. Uh, but that's what the number function does already. It gives us the output of the number function for that input. So we can actually just replace this whole callback with just the number function. Notice we're not calling it, we're just saying that's the callback I wanna give this. And now it still works. We still have our array of numbers, except it looks a lot nicer. And I gotta say, this is one of my favorite things, typecasting an array like this. It's nice and efficient. It's a small amount of code. It's very easy to read. It's semantic. It doesn't get much better than this. Okay, so now we actually wanna add up these numbers. And this is basically the quintessential use case of the reduce method. So reduce is another array built in which takes all the elements of the array and then reduces them down into a single value. So reduce also takes a callback which describes how we want to combine all the elements and you'll notice it has an extra parameter here which basically is going to represent the thing that all of these elements are going to combine into. So in this case since we're adding them up I'm calling this sum. And the output of this function is what sum is going to be reassigned the value of for the next call. So num in this case is the element itself. Sum is the sum that we're building up. Sum is going to start at zero because we're giving that as the second argument of the reduce. And then on each iteration, it's just going to get reassigned sum plus num. 
So it's going to start out at zero. On the first run, we'll get zero plus a thousand, which is a thousand. Then we'll have a thousand plus two thousand, which is three thousand. And then three thousand plus another three thousand, which should get six thousand out of this. And there we go, six thousand. Okay, great. So now we have a function that adds up all the numbers in a group. We could just leave it like this. That's totally fine. But we're basically just using each of these variables once. So we could actually just consolidate this down quite a bit. And then since we're just returning this one thing, we don't need to use a multi-line arrow function expression. We could just do the standard input output arrow function and nice. So I like the look of that. It's uh, very clear. It's describing each of the steps here. We do a split, we do a map, we do a reduce. Okay, so I'm just gonna move that function up top for now because now we actually want to apply this not just to the sample group, but to every element in our number groups array. So this is another situation where we wanna do the same thing to each element of the array and get a new array out of that of all the modified values. So we're gonna use dot map again. So in this case, we'll take each group and we'll apply the get sum of group function to that. But you might notice this looks kind of like the other dot map that we had earlier. Basically, we can just say get sum of group because we're basically just giving the output of that function with the given input. And there we go. So now we have an array that actually represents the sums of each group. So now we need to find the largest of these values. And the simplest way to do that would basically just be to use math.max. One thing we have to keep in mind is that since it's an array of values, we're gonna use the spread operator to actually find the maximum of those values. If we don't use the spread operator, then it's gonna think we're just asking for the maximum value of just this one input, which is an array, and it doesn't even know how to parse that because it's not a number. So basically it's just gonna give us none, not a number. Okay, great, so we've got our spread operator in there and we're getting a value here which seems to match what we had in the problem statement, so that's great. Now let's actually grab our puzzle input. Let's give this a try officially. And with the puzzle input pasted in, we'll give this another run. And there we go, 71,502. Let's go back to our advent of code browser window and we'll see if that ends up being the correct value. Nice, okay, that's the value we were looking for. We've earned a star, let's take a look at part two. Okay, so part two is very, very similar. We're gonna use most of the same code. The only difference is that instead of the maximum value, we actually want the top three values and then we wanna add those together. So the way we're gonna try this is to basically sort the sums array in descending order and then just take the first three elements of that sorted array and add those together. So to sort the array, we're gonna use the dot sort array built in, but there are a couple of considerations here. So first of all, let's just switch back to the sample input because it's a lot simpler to work with and we know what value to expect. Uh, and if we were to try this right now, it wouldn't sort it right. It would give us basically the lexicographic order. Like it, it would essentially alphabetize these. It would sort the numbers as though they were strings, which is not what we want. So we're gonna have to give this a custom sorting function. So just like with dot map and dot reduce, we're gonna give dot sort a callback. The way this callback works is that we're gonna take in two values which represent like a pair of elements that are being compared. And then if it gets a negative result, it's gonna switch them. If it gets a positive result, it's gonna keep them in that order. So by doing num2 minus num1, we should be able to get this in descending order. And there we go. Okay, so that's looking a lot better. The other consideration here is that when we do the dot sort method, it actually does modify the array. We call this a mutating method because it actually changes the original array even though we're assigning it to a new array. So if we don't want to do that, you know, maybe we consider that a side effect and we want to avoid that for the sake of functional programming, let's make a copy of the group sums array and sort that and assign it to sorted sums. So that way our group sums array will remain the same and our sorted sums array will be nice and sorted the way we want it. Oh, and I'm just using the spread operator to make a new array with all the elements of group sums, but there are a lot of ways you could copy the array, so that's really up to you. Okay, so now we basically just wanna take the first three elements in this array and add them together. So to get just the first three elements, I'm gonna use dot slice. 
So dot slice is another array built-in method, which basically just takes a slice of the array from one index to another. One thing to keep in mind is that it's gonna include the element at the first index that we give it, but it will not include the element at the second index. So basically this should give us just the elements at index zero, one, and two. And there they are. Okay, cool. So those are our top three values. Now we actually want to add those together. So we could do this in a way that's like totally manual where we say uh, top three sums at zero plus top three sums at one plus top three sums at two. But instead, we actually have a way to add up all the elements in an array. And we did it before. It was when we used reduce. So since we're using this callback again now, we're gonna actually give it a name. We're gonna call this sum reducer, and we're gonna use it both in our get sum of group function as well as for getting these top three sums. So this is another nice thing about reduce is that we can reuse our reducer functions. And once again, this is gonna start at zero. That's a good thing to include just in case there aren't any elements in the array. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about that here, but there's no downside to doing it. So 45,000 is the value we're getting, and I believe that matches the expected value in the problem statement, so that's perfect. Let's actually try this with the puzzle input. Okay, so we get 208,191. Let's try plugging that in and seeing if it's the right answer. Awesome. Okay, so we've got our second star. This is all looking great. There are just a couple of things I wanna say about this. So the first thing is, it's kind of awkward having this like 2000 line puzzle input right at the start of our code. It kind of makes it hard to get an overview of the whole thing very easily. So what I want to do is basically just grab that puzzle input directly and we're going to use the fetch function. This is a JavaScript function that's normally used for working with APIs, but basically we're going to give it the URL of our puzzle input and it should be able to grab the text from there. Well, actually it's going to grab more than just that because it's going to have metadata and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to use response.text in order to get the actual puzzle input out of that. Okay, so one thing to note about this is that this is an asynchronous call, which means it might take some time to actually get the data from that URL. So this is why we're gonna use a wait so that it's not gonna move on to the next line until it's actually done getting that value, until it gets a response from the fetch function. And then same thing for our response.txt, that's also an asynchronous function. We wanna wait for that before we actually return the response text. And then because we need to use a wait, that means this summon puzzle input function needs to be an asynchronous function. So we just put the word async ahead of it. And that means when we call this function, we're gonna to have to call it with await once again. Now, unfortunately, one downside to this is in order to get the puzzle input, we sort of need to be logged in. It needs to be aware of our credentials. And so we're gonna have to do this in the browser console. We're not gonna be able to do this in the IDE here. So that's okay because we need to go to the browser anyway to submit our answer. So it's not that much of a detour. So let's take this code. We're gonna copy this over into our browser console. And then we should be able to just run this and get the value directly, and there it is. Okay, nice stuff. So I kind of prefer to write it this way. I think I wrote this function in the 2020 videos, but I'm not sure. Anyway, here it is now. <laughs> All right, so that's a lot nicer. I think our code looks a lot more manageable, not having the extra 2,000 lines at the start. But before we finish up, let's just talk about whether we can actually make this run more efficiently at all. So the one thing I wanna mention about this is if we take a look at our get sum of group function, we're doing a dot split, which converts it to an array. Then we're doing a dot map, which makes a new array. And then dot reduce is basically adding up everything in that array. So the dot map is basically making this intermediary array that is gonna take up space in memory. So it would be a little more efficient if we could do kind of like a lazy evaluation where we don't commit that extra array to memory. So this isn't really gonna make a big difference, but if we really wanted to make this as efficient as humanly possible, what we could do for now is basically just modify the reducer so that it expects a string, and then while it's adding to the sum, it'll actually do the conversion to a number right there. So we're basically just doing both of those steps in one. 
Now, if we wanted to kind of generalize this a bit, there's a concept called transducers, which we can use to sort of modify a reducer. And the code is a little more complicated. It's probably a lot for day one, but we'll take a look at those probably in a future video. And then the only other thing is, speaking of intermediary arrays, when we do this dot sort, basically we're making this whole array of sorted values and we're not actually using almost all of them. Like it's just the first three that we actually need. So that's taking up a fair bit of extra space. And then it's also taking some time to actually go through and sort this. So we could probably do this in a way where we just go through the array once and use that to find the top three values. I'm not going to do it here, but I'm going to leave that as an exercise, an extra challenge for anyone who wants to give that a try. So if you want to leave your answer in the comments or on the Coding Serenity Discord, please feel free to do so. I'd love to hear from you. All right, so that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again on the next one. Oh, and remember, the first step is believing you can do it. Bye.